Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going to Q4 of the weekly contest for six minimum cost for cutting kick two. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this one. Um, so I am, I know that I'm going to get a couple of questions about um, this problem. I mean, just in general. Um, I spent seven minutes about or six minutes about this uh, on this. Most of it, honestly, about just proving it correct a little bit. Um, so. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's a it's a very weird problem. A lot of people got it very quickly, and you know my rank is actually kind of low. Uh, I I think, that, you know, um, the point of this channel is also just to you know um, me going over things that I've done wrong as well, not just explaining it. So feel free to kind of watch it on a faster speed. But for me, I think the big part is that I just forgot that Q three and Q four are the same problems, and as a result. I just didn't think about it. And by the time I had to do Q4, the solution is so different that it, it basically was a reset. Like maybe I saved a minute on rereading the problem, but but it was a reset knowing that constraints are now uh, 10 to the fifth. And honestly, um, I wouldn't say that this is a easy problem in the sense that um, is in the sense that the solution is easy, right? Or like it, the the key part about this problem is that it's a greedy problem and as a greedy problem it always feels easy when you know the solution because you're like oh of course so it's kind of you know tricky in that way to say it is easy and for me definitely i spent a good amount of time just um and you could watch it you know the live portion i i did definitely spend a good amount of time just trying to figure out or just proving to myself because they even within greedy strategies there are a couple of ways of doing it and maybe I should have done the pen and paper thing, which we'll do here together during the contest. Maybe that'll save me a little bit of time, but because I thought there are a couple of greedy ways of thinking about it. But also, honestly, uh, as soon as you for this particular problem, I think it's like I said, I don't want to say it's easy, but if you have done a, a lot of contests in a weird way, it is easy, y even if you haven't seen it before, because the constraints and all these things makes it such that there's really only one way of solving this. Because there's no, uh, I mean, unless there's like, it's either there's only one way of solving it, which makes it everyone solvable or something, you know, everyone's solving it. Uh, and and you take a look at the accepted and then you're like, okay, well, yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, and by the time I opened this problem, like 150 people got accepted, which is for me very rare. That means that a lot of people got it very early. Um, and so a little bit of like kind of a, on, a, on a meta uh, contest thing. Um, so when I saw this, it really could only have been like one thing and it's greedy. And yeah, and it, it almost feels like for this problem, there's no other possible solution. So that's uh, is either that or of course the official solution is wrong, but that's another, you know, uh, yeah, that's another thing. But, um, but as a result of that, um, that's basically how I kind of build that intuition and building that trust. But, uh, but yeah, but okay. But let's actually go over uh, the greedy solution first. So, and I, so the, the, uh, for Q3, which is the same problem, but N, R and C is like 20. Um, uh, you know, but that one, I it is just brute force, so we didn't really, you know, go into detail. So I'm just looking to put this thing. Oops, no, that's not what I want. Okay, there you go. Right, the idea here is that. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't really have a strict thing, but this is like my visualization in my head when I was doing it during the contest. So you have some cuts and you have some things, right? So okay, so let's say within the same uh, axis. So, you know, we have five and a two, right? Uh, well, what does this mean? Well, um, there, re there are really only two possible ways to kind of explore, really, right? Like, let's say we have the five and the two, and that's it, and we don't worry about the workers yet. There's really only two ways of thinking about it, right? Or like two ways to explore, even, which is that we either... Because every other way means that there's some exchange argument that makes it more optimal in, in the other direction, right? But what I mean by that is that it can only go from increasing, right? So, you know, increasing, I don't know how to draw it. 
I guess in, this is like increasing or decreasing, right? Uh, so it, it really is two possible order, uh, increasing or decreasing. And you get to the idea that it's going to be decreasing very quickly because let's say we, we cut five first and then cut two later and there's no change because the vertical, the, the horizontal lines don't matter, then it doesn't change. But let's say that there's, we do one five and then we do one cut. It doesn't even matter what the cost is, but let's say we do, um, yeah, the five cut first, uh, just one horizontal cut second and then the two. And then now it's going to be five plus two plus two, right? Because here immediately you have to make this cut twice where the five you make once. And if you want to do the exchange argument, then you just do, you know, five plus five plus two. And of course, this is going to cost more. So you always want to go this way from larger to decreasing. So that's in one axis, right? Um, Yeah, so that, that's basically on one axis. Hope, hopefully this makes sense. And that exchange argument is, you know, I think it's pretty easy to come up with um, after you have some understanding and concept, right? Okay, so then how do you incorporate the, the other axis, right? Uh, okay. Let me... um, well, then now let's say this is five. How do you figure out which one goes? Um, well, then now we have to figure out w what it means to be the cost. The cost of this five is just five times the number of um, uh, horizontal cuts plus one, right? So here there's zero cut, so it's going to be zero plus one. And then here in the beginning will also be the case. So it's going to be five times zero plus one. So the argument here is that, so there are a couple of cases, but in the case where they're both equal, it doesn't matter, right? Why doesn't it matter? Because um, I don't know if that I don't think they're unique. Actually, let me double check the constraints. They're not unique, but let's just say for the purpose of without loss of ambiguity, um, let's say they're unique, right? Then basically you either cut the horizontal first, and then one this becomes a one, right? Or cut the vertical first, and this becomes a one. But as you can see, that's just five plus. 5 plus 5 or 5 plus 5 plus 5. So so if they're the same, it really doesn't the order doesn't matter, right? But okay. So then now we we can go over to the other case. And of course, you know, you could flip the axis or whatever. So so you could do all these proofs without loss of generality. But this is just like the idea of kind of going for all the cases, right? Let's say there's five and four. Then now what happens, right? Let's say you cut the five first, then what, what do you get? You get five, and then now you cut the four. That um, but you know you cut this, so then now the four of the same way will have four four. So it's plus four plus four, um, and and then if you do it the other way, if you cut the four first, then now you cut five and five, right? And clearly you want to do the more expensive one first, and that's really basically. I mean, this is um, like a exchange slash you know comparison argument or whatever you want to call it but that's really it and and um and surprisingly everything i showed you is pretty much all the cases of all you need for the proof right i mean maybe there's some like um you know rotate or not with it uh uh what's it called uh, re uh access refractive thing right like for example you could say this is a five and this is a this is a four uh, let me you know, this is a five and this is a four and then do the same math or whatever. But but this is all the cases, right? So you have to do it on the horizontal or on the same dimension and then on um, against two axes. And that's pretty much it. I mean, once you, realize, once you have those two proofs, so is it possible to get it way fast? The answer is yes. Um, but yeah, uh, but I was just way... It, uh, uh, this particular contest, I was trying very hard to slow down because I was, I've been making too many silly mistakes lately. Uh, and un unfortunately, uh, it kind of cost me. And also Q3 and Q4 being the same problem, uh, I kind of just spent 10 minutes debugging. So that was just not a worth... Um, like if I could shave given five minutes, then this would be a much faster time. And yeah, even at 20 minutes, which usually is a pretty good time, I'm 286, so this is not great. But, uh, but yeah. 
Uh, and here is how I do the code. Um, and I, I, I always like using Q Dex for these things just because then, now, you know, um, you get a lot of things for free with Dex. Um, but yeah, but otherwise, you, you have, I have a horizontal deck, and this is after sorting it. Um, and you could also use a heap, actually. Mm, yeah, you could have used a heap, but uh, but I just, I don't know, because you, you, only, you don't put anything else in it, so sorting should be fine. And then, yeah, you put the, you have a horizontal deck, you have a vertical deck. This is keeping track. I mean, that's actually not the cut, but it's the cut plus one is the formula that we did, right? So basically, this is saying, uh, and we greedy on the bigger number. So, um, yeah, so because everything is sorted, we just kind of keep on doing the big number and whether they're, they're vertical or uh, horizontal. Actually, you could even clean this up a little bit. Um, I did it this way in that, okay, if the her, uh, horizontal um, thing is zero, oh, sorry, if the horizontal cut is cheaper, uh, the, f the biggest element that, uh, is bigger, is more expensive then we do a horizontal cut da, 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 right otherwise um yeah and this is to do all the comparisons with one of the queue runs out then we could do this uh just double checking that we constrain the rest and just you know keeping track that we do the cuts uh you know this doesn't actually matter because we don't use it we use the other one but uh but yeah um so this is going to be dominated by n log n um the two sorts and or uh, I guess R log R plus C log C, and or everything else is linear. So that's just the solution. All R, R log R plus C log C, and all of R space and all of log, all of R plus C space. Um, and yeah, and this is the greedy solution. This is the greedy explanation. Uh, for an up south, I am gonna try to clean this up. Uh, now that I actually understand the thing, um, it turns out all you have to do is just like um. Yeah, Q is, uh, let's just say array is equal to do, 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 right? And then for H in horizontal, horizontal cut, uh, we can even just say array dot append, say H, and then, I don't know, H, and then for V in vertical cut, right? Because uh, the idea here is that actually, I, I just noticed is that um, because we're always doing these comparisons, we, we really don't care. We, we All we need to do is just sort uh, reverse is equal to true, so that reverse is on a big, oops, right? And then now we have, and that's it, right? Um, and then now you have, for the cost, uh, and then type in, um, in a way, right? So if T is equal to H, then uh, it's a horizontal cut. So we do, 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 do. Uh, cost, we add it by cost plus VC, and that's it, right? And then else, VC plus one, cost, do, 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 uh, C plus v, HC, right? I think that's right. I don't know. I get confused easily, right? So yeah, so you could even think of it this way. You just um, you don't even need to do the the pseudo merge sort thing because you could just do the merge before the sort. So yeah, uh, this is of course. I mean, this is slightly more expensive technically because it's R plus C parentheses log R plus C, but it's just so much cleaner, you know. Um, but yeah, that's all I have with this one. Uh, let me actually well one more thing is just try to look at the time. I guess this is slower because of that reason. But it's just so much cleaner to write, right? So yeah, uh, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, if you watched this video, that means that you're not a cheater. So, you know, or at least, I guess you could be a cheater and watch it because you didn't actually solve it. But I don't know. And thanks for watching. And you can watch me solve it live in the contest now. Uh, 13 and 15, right? Okay, YOLO. Please work. And no timeout. Okay. Wow. People are really done. Oh, there's a Q. Oh, hmm. Do people, is this a known answer? I forgot to, that there's, there's a double, but um, I guess people just know this one. <laughs> yeah, I guess people just know this one. Um, hmm. And M and N could be really big. So that's actually, I didn't even think about it, to be honest. 
took a long time on the silly one. Um, and 152 people got it. Mm. So each cut has to be done, right? And then it's just about number of times you have to do each cut. So, okay, so that means that by vertically cutting here, so maybe it's like a sorting thing, but, hmm. But, um, so seven and then four, four. How do I do the math here? I, maybe I could have done it thinking the other way, but I, this is going to be a disaster. Uh, maybe it's a known problem. I don't know. This can be five. It's just sorting in a way. You want to do the most expensive cut first and then just worry about everything else later. Does that really make sense? I guess so, by the exchange argument. No, but that's because these are symmetric, right? So you have to do you have to do the horizontal and the vertical cut in different order, maybe, depending on the weight of these things. Um, so basically, every time you have a vertical cut, it increases the horizontal cut by one, times it by two. Right. So then the cheapest is going to be. Yeah, I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself, and it's just making me slower. Um, I think that's the right idea. I'm just so slow today. Um, okay. Because it's just like the exchange argument thing. And you always want it to sort by the, the cuts on the thing. So, okay, so maybe we do a sort of cut, sort, because it doesn't really matter. And then now you have, let's just say, And then now, we just kind of compare, right? Which is, so the cost is going, of the horizontal cut that we could do it now is just the number of vertical cuts that we've done before. I mean, it's greedy, but I'm trying to prove the greedy in my head and it's a little bit messy. Um, like the extreme, okay, so put it here, okay. So every time you don't cut, you, you create it by one, right? So, okay. No, we want to um, reverse the metro, reverse the metro. So then now we want the front, and then now um, if it, the front is greater than and we cut. The equal does that matter? I guess not because they, you just get to it you know, eventually in some order. Is that true? If everything is the same, then the order doesn't matter. Okay, fine. Maybe you're right, Larry. Hmm. 
this isn't done yet I just want to see which pants out okay okay mm, so if this is a seven and then just a five that looks okay um, But we also have a magic weapon, so I guess I can check this. Um, well, it is called cute to me. So, okay. Yeah, I mean, hmm, a little bit slow. I, I. Thanks for watching everybody. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this contest. Stay good, stay healthy to go mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.